right, sorry about that. My mom calls. I have to take it. Um, anyway, we were on six. The sense of that which is imminent. I am right, right here. Okay. The true disciple is concerned with that which is spiritually imminent. This includes a sen a right sense of timing. The disciple must awaken to that which is on the very verge of pre precipitation into human thinking and life circumstances, so that he can take the occult which is hidden and spiritual steps needed for revelation karmic usefulness and active cooperation let me tell you something everything that they have mentioned has just been so religified they have religified that which is natural to us all you have to do is learn to know yourself and know God and get in tune, do your prayers, your meditations, devote your time to spiritual growth and soul growth, taking time for just yourself and be still and hear the quiet, still voice of God and all of this that they're talking about, I already do. These are the new training developments possible now for those who are rightly focused and oriented of these six objectives. Numbers 1, 3, and 5 relate to necessary work within substance of the three world, human evolution, mental, emotional, and physical, of subhuman kingdoms in nature and of the planetary whole in response to realization of the plan and recognition of the purpose. Numbers 2, 4, and 6 concern the registration and consciousness of the subtle words of meaning and significance and the occult meanings of the subjective communication between states of consciousness. They require the disciple in training to work with such one-pointed attention and ashramic stability that awareness of the master and the ashram does not assume a prominence which can distort a vision of the plan and disturb the rhythm of the ashram. The sense of planetary relationship supersedes for the disciple the sense of right human relationship since he is no longer liable to error no longer liable to error or neglect in his relation with his fellow men this then leads to an awareness of the extraplanetary relationships which exist and to the activity of the diva evolutions in relationship with the spiritual hierarchy mystery schools of the future the tibetan master states that the end of this century or soon after the new mystery schools of the future will come into existence these will be established by experienced senior initiates from the ashram as the externalization of the hierarchy actually gains momentum the schools will be established in two groups preparatory and advanced for applicants and for initiates dk informs us that the 14 rules of applicants given to the book initiation human and solar and the 14 rules for disciples and initiates given in the book of rays and initiations the fifth and final volume of a treatise on the seven rays will form the foundational teaching for these two grade of schools the science of meditation and the conscious building of the anta karana will be the first two preliminary stages in the esoteric curriculum of all true esoteric schools. This develops the sense of wholeness of synthesis which is occult vision and is necessary faculty for those trained in new schools who will be the builders of the new world and the trainers of the future public opinion. <sighs> trainers of future public opinion this is the purpose of esoteric teaching, correct interpretation, and full application to the reconstruction of the world along New Age lines. Oh my goodness. You know, when I read this stuff, I actually hear no, no intelligence. Zero intelligence. Zero compassion. Zero cognition. And they think they're so higher than everybody else.
He's no wonder our world is in the shit it's in. The Tibetan master has specifically outlined what he would like to have done. Yeah. Now and in the immediate future, the work that must be done is as follows. You have been trained to do it. You've been trained to do it. Responsibility is yours, as will be my unfailing help. Prepare men for reappearance of Christ. This is your first and greatest duty. The most important part of that work is teaching men on a large scale to use the invocation so that it becomes a world prayer and focuses the invocative demand of humanity. Enlarge the work of triangles so that subjectively and etherically light and goodwill may envelop the earth. Promote ceaselessly the work of good world goodwill so that every nation may have its group of men and women dedicated to the establishing of the right human relations. You have the nucleus, I'm sorry, I'm just sitting here having this vision of this entity that is taking control of these people who feel they have such an important job to do and they don't see that they're being so misled I, I, you guys can't see my face but I'm just sitting here like just shaking my head <sighs> okay so you have a nucleus and expansion must be undertaken you have right here the principle of goodwill present throughout this world the task will be heavy indeed but far from impossible undertake the constant distribution of my books <laughs> which contain much of the teachings for the new age you don't need books to learn from the spirit Otherwise, you get yourself in trouble for talking to unfamiliar spirits. In the last analysis, the books are your working tools and the instruments whereby you will train your workers. See that they are kept in steady circulation. <laughs> I can just see Rockefeller writing this. Or <laughs> oh, man, keep the... keep. Yeah, this came from a spirit and he wants to keep the books in steady circulation and let the money roll in while he sits inside of his office and laughs all the way to the bank endeavor to make the WESAC festival a universal festival and known to be of value to all men of all faiths it is the festival in which the two divine leaders of the East and of the West collaborate together and work in close spiritual union Christ and Buddha uses the festivals each year as the point of inspiration for coming years work see that you do likewise spiritual energies are then uniquely available discover the members of the new group of world servers whenever possible and strengthen their hands look for them in every nation in expressing many lines of thought and points of view remember always that in doctrine and dogma and in techniques and methods they may differ widely from you but in love of their fellow men in practical goodwill and in devotion to establishing the right human relations they stand with you they are your equals and can probably teach you much may the blessing of the one whom we all serve rest upon you all and upon all disciples everywhere may you do your full share in helping men to pass from darkness into light from death to immortality Don't forget to buy your books. Uh, ice cream man's around. <laughs> Seems rather appropriate. Oh, is there anything else? Oh, the triangles bit. What is this? I haven't looked at this yet. Uh, 
Oh. Electric masonry, build the carbon temple. Oh my goodness. Um, I thought that we were carboned out. Right? Electric tension in sacred space. I'm not going to read this right now. I'll, I'll put a link if you guys want to go take a look at it. Um, I gotta look at it. I can't resist. Let's see. Commonly known, the basis of all organic life is carbon. Is that why they're taxing us on it? Carbon tax in California or across the nation. And one of the secrets behind carbon's ability to form long polymer chains and construct organic forms is an inherent magnetic power. Until recently, scientific theory deemed it impossible to magnetize carbon at room temperature due to the arrangement of its electrons. The magnetic club was an exclusive one with just a few prestigious members, ion, iron, cobalt, nickel, and a few rare alloys. But now, as a result of sophisticated light research, carbon has been officially recognized as part of this group, and science and technology are working to bring the two worlds of magnetism and carbon together. Something the high priests of alchemy have long been doing. Really? Okay. Promise I'll touch on this another time. I was going to show you the... Um, if I can find it. Yeah, they do have a London headquarters library and New York library, just so you know. Uh, here it is. Triangles. A network of light and love. I just love the way they took something that was so soft and then made it into sharp pointed pyrograms. Uh, pyrograms. Pyrograms, pyramids. So enlarge the work of the triangles. So oh, enlarge the work of the pyramids so that subjectively and etherically light and goodwill may envelop the earth. The world has a spiritual destiny behind evolution. There is an abiding purpose which we can call the plan of God. Register your triangle. Oh, I see. It's a group. They're just trying to put everybody at certain points. A triangle is a group of three people who link each day in thought for a few minutes of creative meditation. They invoke the energies of light and goodwill, visualizing these energies as circulating through the three focal points of each triangle and pouring out through the network of triangles surrounding the planet. Yep. Triangles video. And then I'm going to end this here. Eleven thousand one hundred and eighty nine views. And it was uploaded April twenty first, two thousand ten. Hundred and forty eight subscribers. Which is not all that great. Maybe. The world has a spiritual destiny. Behind evolution there is an abiding purpose, which we can call the plan of God. The plan works out through humanity. We are responsible for understanding it and for doing what we can through our daily living to express its meaning and significance. Triangles was founded in 1937. It is a world service activity for men and women of goodwill who believe in the power of thought. Triangles aids the divine plan through the following objectives. 
establish right human relations and to spread goodwill and understanding amongst all peoples. To raise the level of human consciousness and to transform the mental and spiritual climate of the okay. planet. You know what? I don't want to listen to this. Idea. To strengthen and support. Um. I think I yeah here it is oh god you know I lost I lost this and now I found it I hold it down with a snapshot go over someone else the found it I lost this video that. I hope it's the one I think it is granddad. the worldwide activities of the yep. Lucius Trust founded by Allison Foster Bailey is dedicated to establishing human relations by promoting the education of the human mind towards recognition and practice of the spiritual principles and values upon which a stable and interdependent world society may be based. Like Alice Bailey, Sarah McKechnie is taking her professional and spiritual journey through life with her husband, Dale McKechnie, who is Vice President of the Lucius Trust. Sarah McKechnie, I can only imagine that you've been asked thousands of times to speak on the history of Lucius Trust founder Alice Bailey. But before I ask you to do this, I would like you to reach farther back into history and give us an overview of Alice Bailey's Russian mentor, Madame Helena Blavatsky, and why Bailey looked to her for inspiration. Madame Blavatsky, as she's called, or sometimes referred to as HPB, her initials, was a real pioneer in the um, bringing of what's called the ageless wisdom to the West. The ageless wisdom is a term for the spiritual teaching that for most of human history was hidden or veiled, but it's, uh, it's like a, a golden thread that runs throughout the world religions and mythologies and has always been present in human consciousness in some form or another appropriate for the time. Then in about 1875, uh, a Russian woman, Madame Blavatsky, who had traveled extensively throughout the East and studied with spiritual teachers who were in remote locations in Tibet, in Egypt, deep in South America, she traveled all over. Okay, Blavatsky quote, one of the most hidden secrets involves the so-called fall of angels. Satan and his rebellious hosts will thus prove to have become the direct saviors and creators of divine man. Thus, Satan, once he ceases to be viewed in the superstitious spirit of the church, grows into the grandiose image. It is Satan who is the god of our planet and the only god. Satan, or Lucifer, represents the centrifugal energy of the universe, this ever-living symbol of self-sacrifice for the intellectual independence of humanity. H.P. Blavatsky, The Secret Doctrine, pages 215, 216, 220, 245, 255, and 533. So, um, the president of Lucius Trust, it's not the video I wanted because she was actually, they showed her speaking, but um, again, I'm going to end this. I'm keeping it short. I've got things I need to do. Uh, if you feel that I think I'm on video four, if these are of value, I would ask that you would share them. I'm going to create a playlist, but I'm going to repeat what I said in the very first video. We can continue to sit back and observe all of the signs and the symbols and the numerology and the numbers and the messages being given to us, but you're not attacking you're not doing anything for the problem the problem is a spiritual problem and it's being fought in the spiritual plane and in essence what we're doing is on our computers is we're just helping it to grow helping their new world order to grow that the world the word needs to get out and you need to understand that there's a middle path in between all of the New Age fluff and stuff and New Age, there are some New Agers that are very serious but they don't realize that when you start channeling these masters entities, beings, unfamiliar spirits you are unwittingly bringing the demise onto this planet 
And for those of you that are religious, you have been unwittingly sitting back and just waiting for the demise to happen. We have to get proactive in spirit, people. Proactive. Go ask God. He'll answer. I promise. Thanks for listening.